Okay guys, so now let's continue our advanced editing and see what all these tools doing here. So here we have the divide category and we have the construct category. So let's start by planarize. Planarize, it will allow you to uh, construct lines that is intersected with each other. So for example, if we have uh, an intersected line, let's say for example, we can draw a new line right here, like that. And let's draw another one right here. So let's say, for example, this is a network and we want to split every single part of it. So that's how we go to modify and go to planarize and we select the features that we want to do that to. And we say planarize and you will see after it's finished, this part here we selected by mistake, so it will stay the same. But here we have one part, we have another part, we have a third, fourth, fifth, and every single intersection created a part for me. And, it, and this tool is good to create your geometric network or your network. When you draw your lines and you want to split every single li line on an intersection, you do it through this one. So we go back here and see what else we have. Ex we have explode and explode. What it does is going to explode or split any two features that you have merged together. So we have the merge tool here that we can merge two features together but we already draw uh, but we already draw an existing feature that actually two features but have the same attribute so remember this one when we draw it and we right click and say finish part and actually draw another part that have the same attribute and when we select it it actually select both of them we can use explode to split these two features separately and it will create two features with two attribute tables. So here we have only one features and the feature ID is 58. And now I can explode it and it will be two features. And as you see right now, they have been exploded. And when I select this one, it's separate from this one. And each one of them have a separate ID. As you see one here, this is a 61 and this one is 62. So that's how you can separate two merged features or two features that share the same feature ID or the same attribute by using explode. So let's go back again. And the next thing is a split and we will choose this feature and try to split it and split is very easy concept. You just draw a line and it will split this polygon for you when you finish drawing this line. As you see here, it's split it to two parts. Also, you can do the same with the lines. So if I select this one, I can do split by just drawing a line here and it will split it to two parts for me. So as you see right now, this is the first part and this is the second one. Also, you can do split by feature and what that will does is if I select this one and I try to move it to here like that. And I said split by feature and then the input feature is this one and the target feature is going to be this one. And now I can click split and it will split it for me to the parts. As you see here, now we have three different parts based on this shape. If I select move, I can move this one. It's separate. I can move this one, as you see. And I have this part right here. And I also have this one separate like here. So that make the shapes separate for me. And here, as you see here, we have separate parts based on the shape we used to split. So you can create a split using a line and also in the line, you can create a split, not just straight line, you can make the line however you want. So like that, and you can do this, this, like this, and double click here, and it will split it to different separate parts. Like you see here, we have one, two and three. So that's how you can use a split. Also, the second thing we have is divide and divide is a really good tool to divide a polygon or a line based on distance or area. So if we select this polygon here and we say divide. So here we have three options. For example, the proportional area will divide your polygon to equal areas. And here it asks you which direction you want to start to divide your polygon. So make sure you select the show preview so you can see how your 
new polygons will look like and here you can select which side of the polygon you want your divide to start from from so here it's going to start from the right to the left or from the bottom to the top or any direction you want to divide it also you can draw a certain line to make your divide direction so if i draw a line from here i double click you will see that it will divide my polygon based on the line I draw and here you can change how many parts your divide will be so you can make it five six and you will see here once you click divide you will see that have been divided to this part so now you have a separate polygon and each one of them have a different attribute and have a different object ID so let's control Z to see the other option here here we have equal area and equal area will create uh, equal areas based on your input here so for example here we can make this by square miles and let's make it 10 square miles and we want 4 and here it shows you what is the total square miles of your actual total polygon and the sum of the new polygons area how much it will be and here I cannot make 10 square miles because that will exceed the actual size of the polygon so let's make it 5 and now I have no problem to do the divide and I can select my direction to be from here and this is how it's going to look like five miles five miles five miles a square and then this is the last part that is the remaining and if i click divide it will divide it the same way uh, equal width same thing like equal area but using the width so here i'm gonna make the width five thousand feet and i'm gonna make it one two three four five parts and as you see here when i click divide it will be divided to this sections right here so that's how you can use divide and it's a really good tool to use if you have a large piece of land and you need to split it or divide it based on certain values or to divide it based on area values you can use the divide to do that so let's go back here and here we have merge and merge will allow you to merge two features into one feature so as we did split to this one before actually this two is two separate features if we select both of them and we click merge you will see that you have the option to merge them and here it asks you which one I want to maintain in the attribute and which one I want to delete the attributes for so because this are two features the first one object ID is 42 and the second object ID is 64 here it's ask me which one you want to maintain as your main attribute because once I select one if I preserve the 42 the 64 attributes will be deleted so here you have the option to choose which one you want to preserve as attributes and which one you want to remove as attributes but the features will be merged to one feature or you have the option to create a totally new feature from these two features so if I selected this option you will see that I will have a third that I can move right here and I still have these two uh, and I still have these two remaining here but if I select existing features and I selected this two and I click merge now I'm sure that the 64 have been disappeared totally so you have to be careful when you do the merge make sure that you are preserving the right attributes or be safe and use the new feature option so let's go back here again here it's a very simple way to create a buffer um, you can create a buffer for polygons lines and points so let's select this point and create a buffer for it and here the first option it's ask you which template you want to create buffer from you can use a polygon or a line to create your buffer so let's choose the orange county cities and let's make the buffer size 5000 feet and also you can add different rings so instead of one buffer I can add three buffers and each one will be 5000 feet apart from the other one so if I click okay as you see here now I have this buffer and each buffer of them is a separate polygon so if I select this one I right click and I say move and as you see here it will be a separate polygon from the second one and I can select the second one I can move it here and I have the last buffer size and here and this is one is 5,000 feet this one is 10,000 feet from the center so this is how you can do buffer you can do it for polygons lines and points so let's go back again to midify features and see what else we have here we have copy parallel and copy parallel will just copy an existing feature that you select right next to it and this one is good for example if you have a freeway let's say the five 
and you want to draw this freeway in the other direction but you want to have each direction to have its separate line so sometimes when people draw freeways or streets they draw it one line but they have two different values for the directions and sometimes you draw two lines and both of them have different directions and using copy parallel will make it easy for you to copy this line right next to it so let's select this line and we will go to copy parallel and here it shows you the direction for the line this is the start and this is the end so here it asks you which template you want to use maybe you want to copy your new line to another line feature class but if you select a line you will only see lines if you select polygon you will only see the polygons options here uh, here it say keep source attribute value so that means once I copy this line right next to it it will have the same values and I want to maintain these values because I entered the length and I entered the freeway ID and the other direction will have the same freeway ID so I will maintain the source attribute uh, how far you want the new one to be away from the existing one let's just add just 150 feet it's just another direction repetition this is how many times you want to copy this line I just want it want to copy it once here here it, it asks you which side you want to put your new line if the line direction from here to there that means if I put right it will be on this side if I put left it will be on this side if I put both it will be on both sides here it asks you how you want your corners of the line to be like rounded or beveled and we will say copy and when you zoom in you will see that we now we have another copy parallel to the one that we just have and now we have two lines exactly the same and now we can have different attributes for each one of them and you can say which direction each one goes so that's how you can use copy parallel here we have construct polygon and construct polygon will create a polygon from a line feature but these lines have to be intersected to create a polygon for you so for example if we select this tool here you have to select lines that intersect with each other to create a polygon so if I select this one and I click construct it give me an error saying cannot construct a polygon from one line but if I select this ones right here and I say construct polygon it will create a polygon for me right here so now I have a polygon that I can move and use it as a separate polygon and also when you do the construct polygon here you can choose which template you want to, to use to create your new polygon so that's for construct polygon the next tool we have here is offset and offset will actually create a point at the end or in a certain direction from a certain feature you choose so for example if I choose this feature right here and I want to create a point from the cities and I want to be the distance to be 5,000 feet and I want the offset to be like 3,000 feet and which side you can choose the right left or none and you can choose the side of the offset so I will choose right and once I click create you will see that there's a point will be created that is 5,000 feet 5,000 feet apart and 3,000 feet offset from the beginning of the line or the end of the line so if I change it the offset to 6,000 feet you will see that it will be created far from more far from the line and the distance is the distance from the beginning of the line so if I make this zero and say okay you will see that you will create a point right here so the distance is the distance from the beginning of the feature or the first vertex you draw when you created this feature either a polygon or a point or an existing point and the offset will be how much is it far away from the existing one and that's how you can use offset also you have the option here to do interactive and interactive will basically give you the ability to draw a line and will apply all these settings here when you finish drawing the line you will see that there is a point will be created and will give you the option to apply all the settings right here and when I click and say create you will see that there's a point will be created here using the settings but applied against a line that is not actual feature and this how you can use offset the next option we have here is duplicate vertical and duplicate vertical will create another duplicate or like copy paste but with a z value so this only works with 3d and we can check it when we do some 3d uh, in another video and the last tool we have here for this video is mirror and mirror will basically create a copy from your feature but will flip it for you so here for example let's select this one right here 
and we click mirror and here you can make your mirror using two clicks or one click so let's try the two click so the two click will click somewhere and now you have your feature far away from the original one and you can click another one to finish your drawing so that's where it's going to be or you can use one click and click here and move it like that and then once you click anywhere it will be created for you so this is how you can use two clicks or one click to create your mirror and that's it for all the editing options and all the editing tools we have right here again when you open this tools from here it's the same exact tools and now you know what each tool does and how can you use it again i encourage you to play with them try to do uh, different things more than what i did right here and try to use different things but now at least you know the basics for how to use each tool and if you have any questions at any time please let me know thank you and we'll see you in the next video